The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. People ask me why I do that because uh, I always say because uh, if you didn't know and you watched a rebroadcast, yeah, you only know what you know at the time, right? So I know what I know right now. But uh, in six hours from now, that may be dated. Uh, just like the newspaper. Uh, today's newspaper or something, tomorrow's newspaper, a uh, mullet wrapper, if you're on the, uh, on the docks. Uh, so we're up 34 and a half points. I was hoping that we'd get a little bit more of a... Uh, a volume decline a little bit lower today uh, and kind of get it out of the way. Uh, when we look at options, in fact, uh, we'll do that maybe in the next segment. Um, pretty much uh, saying 2850, 2870 is kind of where uh, they went out last night. So I wasn't, I was hoping that we'd have a lot more uh, downside today. Uh, or at least just go sideways and burn a lot of the premiums off. So maybe I could get ready for the pop late this week. Didn't really see any kind of indications uh, in the charts that we're going to get a pop today. Hopefully, or maybe even tomorrow, we get one more push down, drive everybody to despair. They all throw their filthy, rotten, evil calls away at pennies, and I get a chance to buy them there. Uh, but you never know. Anyway, uh, again, we finally had some decent volume in the market uh, today. Not such. Uh, four point, or excuse me, three point eight and change billion shares. So volume is uh, kind of light. Let me update that. Yeah, uh, not what you would think. Um, and of course, we never really got the kind of big uh, down, um, uh, down uh, put numbers that would make me think we've had a permanent low in. Um, you know, even with this bounce, I still suspect that when we get into next week, it's going to be a slow slide into the three-day weekend. Maybe we just continue to lose five, six points or something a day uh, on average through next week. That would be the perfect setup to coming back into June and buying. And so many of the stocks are set up that way the ones I'm looking at anyway, that it certainly looks like that's going to be it. I've had a lot of stocks that uh, I wanted to get into uh, longer term in the Tech Insider, uh, just too many things going on. But uh, now that everybody isn't betting on uh, us going to the moon, uh, much better prices to get back in on longer term trades and have a little bit of cushion down below instead of uh, buying them at the top of the hysteria. Or the hype cycle, which I'm writing about for this week's Tech Insider, uh, along with some other stuff, a lot of biology in this week's Tech Insider. Uh, we did uh, finish uh, a trade that we've had on since uh, early January in the Tech Insider. So what is that, five months? Uh, and that was on uh, Tesla. We started shorting. I think the, the top tick I had on Tesla when I started shorting was 345. Uh, I wanted to show exactly how um, you eat a, a, you short an elephant or something that's way too short. Uh, so we showed how you could just short every pop and kind of uh, uh, kind of ladder in. So we laddered in 25% uh, of a time uh, the last time at uh, 290, I think 295 or 297. Um, I was a little bit more ambitious up at the top. But, you know, if you if you got a long-term short on, how do you put one on if you can't be in front of the screen all the time, especially with a stock that's got fairly high short interest uh, and 
the answer is kind of ladder in. That way you can you won't get quite as much, but at the same time uh, you don't have to put all that risk on at once. Uh, anyway, we covered it at 227 yesterday, uh, and uh, I think my average was around 330 or something. Uh, but uh, you could actually take a look at that, and it's one of the more impressive uh, and most easily um, identifiable bubbles, I suspect, in the market in a long time. Uh, it took me back to iOmega and several others. Uh, I still think it's going to 40 bucks if you've listened to this show for a long time. I think that's approximately what its real value is. Uh, but it's going to probably go sideways for, I don't know, the summer. Maybe it's two months. Maybe it's one month or something. You're going to have to digest it. Had too many shorts coming in. I wanted to hold it for the next couple of years. But I didn't think if we got a decent bounce that it was probably worth hanging on to. And two, uh, probably going after some long positions here, like I said, uh, in that newsletter around uh, the 1st of June, maybe sooner. Saw a couple of today that interested me greatly. Uh, we just need them to close back into the trading range in the next day or two. I could buy them by Friday. Uh, but uh, very interesting trades. And, of course, everybody's glum, the end of the world. That's when I like to buy. Uh, when everybody's euphoric, <laughs> I'm afraid. And when everybody's afraid, uh, I'm kind of greedy, thinking that maybe I'll be able to buy for pennies on the dollar and uh, try that. Anyway, uh, a good wrap-up for our Tesla short, uh, and we'll probably be uh, coming back to that well once again. You can call me at 877-927-6648. Uh, you can email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message uh, <laughs> there was no, um, there was no, uh, cost, additional cost to borrow, uh, Tesla shares. So, uh, yes, we will show the option curves. No, uh, there wasn't any additional cost that I found. And, uh, I've got another question from actually one of the subscribers, why I covered it. And the only reason was there weren't any shares at anywhere to, uh, to loan. And generally, that's a pretty good indication uh, that it's probably time to get out. Uh, let um, some of the late to the party guys, uh, you know, get bored out. Normally, when we start seeing, you know, maybe a fourth of, or even a half of uh, the shorts kind of get out and get bored, that's generally when the stocks are ready to go back down and take the next big leg down. But um, we've talked about all the things in this technology sphere of electronic vehicles and how uh, the rest of the world seems to be going on to uh, fuel cells, or at least Germany, South Korea. Uh, I don't think North Korea has anything. Maybe they've got a goat or something they ride around. Not much on the way north of the border. Uh, German, uh, Germany, South Korea, uh, China, and uh, Japan all look like they're going to fuel cells. Uh, at least that's what they're committing to. So we'll still see. In the meantime, give me a call. I'm looking forward to your dulcet tones at 877-927-6648. The tab Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And uh, I had a question about looking at the options and what they're telling us. Um, everybody went flat yes, uh, going into yesterday uh, and decided that about 285 on the spies is where they thought this thing probably five plus or minus uh, three points on the spies is where this is going to expire on Friday. So they have some fairly decent uh, uh, beliefs that were probably, at least for this week, seeing the bottom of the market. I kept on hoping that it would press farther and farther and the volume would fall out. I'd have a good opportunity to buy some calls. It uh, didn't seem to work out so far. Still have a little bit of the week left. I have a feeling that maybe we pressed a little bit too far down uh, and we have probably picked up too many shorts. Um, sometimes you can, yeah, I'm going to say 285 is kind of on the low side, uh, 287 on the spies. Uh, kind of looks a little bit more realistic. So, and hey, we're not that far away. So the question is, do we get much of anything else happening the rest of this week? I don't think so. Um, but, um, eh, we can, you know, very news driven market, but the, it certainly looks like on options, they've cinched this up, uh, dramatically, uh, since last Friday and, uh, even into yesterday, uh, where they, had well, flat basically from about uh, tw uh, 240 all the way to 300 on the uh, S&P and really cinched it up yesterday. So uh, they kind of think that they got it. Uh, now that the news is in, they kind of got something that can go sideways here into Friday. I continue to hope uh, that we get a light volume pullback into the three-day weekend. So uh, we go back, maybe test few of these lower spots on some of these stocks and set up uh, the buy for the summertime rally. Uh, I'm not as uh, uh, bearish as everybody else is long term, at least a lot of people I'm talking to. Uh, eh, they're not quite out there in the, in the uh, Times Square with a sign that says the end is nigh, but eh, close. They're close. That always makes me think that maybe it's time to start looking for stocks that have come back on low uh, on uh, light uh, volume uh, back to previous lows. So uh, I'll be probably concentrating on that 
and in the shows and pointing those out over the next week. Uh, what else do we have? Got a little bit of history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is history repeating it on this day in 1804. One year after the United States doubled its territory with the Louisiana Purchase, the Lewis and Clark Expedition leaves in St. Louis, Missouri, on an expedition to explore the uh, northwest from the Mississippi River to the Pacific Ocean. Even before the U.S. government concluded purchase negotiation with France, President Thomas Jefferson commissioned his private uh, secretary, Meriwether, can't even say it, Meriwether, Lewis and uh, William Clark on a an army captain to lead the expedition into what's now the U.S. Northwest. On May 14th, the Corps of Discovery, or if uh, I was Obama, it'd be the Corpse of Discovery, Featuring uh, approximately 45 men, although only approximately 33 men would make the full journey, left for St. Louis for the American interior. And that was it. Uh, what else is going on? Okay. And to do what else? Okay. And what else do we have? I think that's it for history. I don't have a lot of more comments. I do remember going uh, uh, in my teenage years, going uh, for a river rafting tour somewhere where these guys were. But uh, yeah, kind of a vague memory. Don't remember much of it left. Let's get into some charts. Have a lot of questions already. Uh, and we shall see. Um, answering a couple of emails here. Um, as we said, uh, covered the uh, Tesla short yesterday in the uh, in the uh, Tech Insider. And uh, you kind of see where we went short back here in the first few days of January of the year. I wanted to hold this thing for a couple of years, but man, it just, just seemed like it was getting kind of long in the tooth. Um, could have a decent bounce in this and then uh, try to reshort it. Uh, in the meantime, we've got a few other questions. First one is take a look at McDonald's, MCD. And uh, this thing did not break at all on the way back up. Uh, I don't see anything that breaks this. Uh, why everybody keeps telling everybody they won't eat McDonald's, uh, they continue to eat McDonald's. Um, not a lot of juice back up here. Uh, I don't know if you want to go short or long. I just don't see the risk reward in going short. Support comes back in at about 194. And at worst, if it blows apart, it's 190. So you make 10 bucks on a $200 stock, that's 5%. Ain't not enough for me. Uh, I don't see anything out here that said that it's ever broke in the downturns. And uh, until you get some kind of signal, I don't see anything out here that says lower. Uh, maybe an improving economy far in advance of what we got. Uh, but uh, eh, they still make a lot of money on breakfast and lunch, even if people aren't eating a lot of dinners there these days. I don't see anything in it, at least in the chart at the moment. And I haven't looked through the books that far. Another quick question out here before we get to um, that restoration hardware. Okay. Um, Again, this is kind of one of the reasons why I covered uh, the short in Tesla yesterday. And that is that you've had these things blown apart. This one from one from 157.71 down to 94.31. Uh, the problem is you had to be right there on earnings uh, pretty much to catch most of these. Uh, and kind of a tough sell as wildly as this has reacted to earnings before. Uh, and, of course, when they came into earnings, there wasn't a lot of foreshadowing uh, other than the stock price had already started to move down. You were going to blow out the lows so significantly. Um, you know what? You would really, I think, the next leg on this one, if you could get it, would be 125. Uh, if it gets back up there, you shake off a lot of the early shorts in this thing. Uh, everybody gets bored with it. Uh, that may be one of the bigger ABCs. What is that going to be about? Uh, 
Well, I can actually do it since I wrote the software that does it. We can look at the expansions, and I don't have to do that much to do that. Uh, what are we going to do here? We're going to just say this whole thing is a monster ABC on the way down because this thing is a giant dog. Um, well, I guess probably not what I'm looking for, but and we'll see. Let's just look at the retracements at the moment. Okay. Uh, go a little shorter time frame, maybe. Yep, there we are. Uh, we'll be back in a second. We'll look at restoration hardware, but uh, 126 for a 60-point move, so that'd take you at about 70 bucks. But uh, 126.01, you want to put an alert on that. It's there. You want to look very hard at pulling the trigger short for a giant ABC on the way down. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. I uh, got just something to get out here. And uh, we will move on. Got a couple of emails during the break. Uh, two, two, two. okay. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts. Um, two, two, two. On this one, yeah. I don't go to Dunkin' Donuts. I got a friend. We go to uh, the beach on Sunday mornings. Go walk down the beach and stuff. 
Uh, anyway, uh, I don't drink coffee. That's probably why I don't go to Dunkin' Donuts that much. Don't eat donuts either, or haven't for a long time. I, d I get one if they are free, but generally I, I go for something a little more substantial. And to have a big breakfast, I have kind of a light lunch, maybe a light dinner. But I like to start off the day you know, not hungry all day long. Doesn't really bother me at night, but I'm always hungry in the morning. Probably because I don't eat at night that much. Um, but uh, I don't see a whole lot in this one either. Um, I don't see. I mean, you went over the previous high. You did so with light volume on my 2750. I think you really have to go back up to 7750 and fail before. You know, it could fail right now, but I'm not a big fan of shorting that one either. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, okay. And we're back in here. Um, got a couple of questions we'll try to get to. Um, and we got, uh, who is this? Me. Oh, Richard. Uh, I got a whole bunch of emails here. Uh, U.S. Steel's big dog. Um, what do I think of it here? Um, actually, chart doesn't look that bad. Um, and again, I'm a big fan of when they're throwing all the babies out with the bath water to go back and look at it. Um, back on May 2nd, $14.16. Uh, 26 million shares. You got into it with 17, 18 million shares. Yesterday, you kind of going sideways out here. Um, you got kind of light volume now. This is where a lot of these patterns, I think everybody's going to be driving and going, you know what? We're going to get an instant V bottom. We're going to get it. I don't think it's going to be that way. I think it's going to, we're into that part of the year where things kind of slow down and volume slows down. So it's going to be hard for shorts to drive these things into the, into the uh, ground. They're just not going to be that kind of huge. You're going to need a lot of selling. Now, we've got I, the pretty much the end of the big IPO boom this week. They needed to raise another 5 billion shares. My guess is that most of that uh, people started selling after they saw on Friday how bad it went. They probably went ahead and started selling, uh, hoping to catch these IPOs this week and maybe thinking these IPOs would come out uh, at a much better price than probably thought when they were trying to get out before uh, Lyft and Uber. Um, and a lot of times that's it. A lot of times they just print a lot more shares and still screw you in the end on these IPOs. But I'll, I'll be watching for a handful of them. But we've got a couple uh, the rest of this week, about $5 billion. And then that's kind of it. So there may be a little hangover over there. Um, you know what? If I have, if I, as a, a, as a seasoned drinker in my youth, I used to like Long Island teas. And if I drank rum or any of the other things in a Long Island tea by themselves, seemed to have a hangover. But if I drank them all together in one big thing, just never seemed to, to have the same hangover. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you were, you, you knew that you were drunk. That was for sure. That's back when you could do it in the 80s. Now you can't do that anymore. Mad Men was kind of the end of it. Uh, anyway, we're down here at these lows. I would love to see these things go sideways and just bore everybody out of the world. So I don't say that it's a bad setup here. What I, and especially with the tariffs, I think everybody's, uh, like I said, throwing the baby out with bath water here. I think that's going to set up some very nice buys. But you're going into a week where the volume's really going to start falling out. It's not generally want to want to plant a flag. I would love for the these stocks that are down on light volume just to go sideways all the way into next Friday, uh, all the way into the next uh, vacation period, and see how well these things work out. Um, because, I, I mean, there's a, uh, there's a couple things that Tim Ward taught me uh, as we listened to them all here on TFNN in the early 2000s. And uh, that was one, don't get in too big a hurry. And when everybody's bored, good time to start really watching, either at highs or lows. 
and again, you've got enough of a, a volume drop here that looks good, but you're also going into a week where we needed to raise a little more money and probably still a bit of a hangover and everybody looking over their shoulders and in the rear view mirrors that the tariff guys, are, the tariff monster is going to get them. Uh, so it could be nice. Now, if we just go sideways and light volume and let all that tension, the tensions, wasn't that uh, uh, Inspector Clouseau? He had to get rid of the tensions. I forget what movie that was in, but they were bad for some reason. I'll think of it. I think it was when Cato was forced to give him a massage every day. But uh, the tensions have to be let go. And time is part of it. So I would absolutely love for the market uh, and the big indexes to pull back on light volume next week. And stocks that you're looking at here, don't move. This volume all falls out. They really don't go any lower. Everybody that sold, that had an opportunity to sell, is done with it. And then maybe come back, uh, what is that, the second? Whatever it is. Uh, the 27th is uh, that. So you got, uh, yeah, you got fun buying coming back in the 28th. You could start seeing it that market move right into that fun buying coming back on the 28th. And so that's what I would ideally think it would be the bullish setup. The bearish setup would be us just running right back up into the 24th, into that weekend. Uh, I don't see that. There's still a lot of uh, overhead resistance, so it's going to be hard slogging. Could do it. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of risk-reward until we get to 28th in this market, except maybe Thursday and Friday uh, for options expiration. Uh, but uh, eh, this day kind of wiped out a lot of it. Uh, but uh, eh, might have individual stocks uh, that show a lot of promise. I looked at the... Uh, option curves on about 100 stocks last night. I'll look at them again. What I want to start seeing is some kind of good um, idea that things have moved that way. Uh, in the uh, longer term tech insider, um, I'm going to be looking at a bunch of stocks that, man, if we get this nice low volume retreat into the three-day weekend that I want to buy. Uh, got some more questions. Uh, one about the I play on the UVXY. We'll talk about that when we come back. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And I uh, had a uh, question from uh, Ronald, who is one of our subscribers to the uh, Path of Least Resistance, is asking me about my model and how the UVXY trade came about. Uh, he's been with us, I guess, a while because he caught the one where we shorted or shorted the UVXY uh, right around the 24th or 26th of December, and I, without getting too much into the weeds uh, on what my model is, it's it's basically a model that learns uh, from repetition of data. And the first big example of that model working was uh, with uh, Atari's breakout. If you remember that 1975 game where it, where it was kind of like Pong, except it was a single person, you'd bounce it around. Um, and they were able to use the machine learning algorithm on it. After it played about 500 games, there was no human that could beat it. Uh, at about 100 games, it was better than all humans. Uh, but by 500 games, it, it learned something uh, about a strategy in the game that just absolutely tore the game up, and no human could really do well. And that's bounce the ball off the side and get above where it would just sit there and bounce back and forth and take off huge amounts of the little tiles on the top. Um, so I've got a model that does that. One of the problems, though, is this model is uh, very much kind of like the weather forecast. I can tell about 10 days, uh, three months, much harder to do, or two months. Um, so a lot of times I will take the money early. Uh, in the case of the last of the options, uh, what do we get? Five or six hundred percent in a handful of days. Now, if we hold on, we could have gotten you know, considerably more. But at the same point, I can't bet that either the president of China or the president of the United States is going to say something that's going to help our cause. I know that there's a certain amount of movement that you should get, whether or not those guys were tweeting or not. And that's kind of when I try to get out. And uh, yeah, how why I kind of say, say the same thing at the end of every show, which is sell when you can, not when you have to, uh, because generally, you know, if you get a huge win and then you have to give half of it back, you're generally a lot more disappointed than this selling it up front. Uh, but uh, eh, who knows? Uh, anyway, the same thing. Um, the problem with uh, basically why didn't I take the uh, – puts on the UVXY when it was up at 95 and we were shorting it up there. Well, when everybody wants uh, to short the world, you just the call uh, the puts and calls are ridiculously priced. Um, you can make these huge the huge money in option when everybody's euphoric and they don't want to really spend a lot of money uh, or charge a lot of money on calls or puts because they think that the market's just going higher. And at that point, if you can get it correct, 
and my model's been is now two for two uh, for that uh, the type of machine learning model on the UA, uh, UVXY. So it works pretty good, but uh, anybody that in machine language knows what I'm talking about and the kind of uh, model that it is. But again, uh, almost always like the weather forecast. Yeah, can you tell two, three, four, five, six, seven days out? Uh, but the models, you know, more than uh, often uh, fall apart after a handful of days. So if I'm doing something like that and I can make five or six hundred percent on a single trade, I'm more than likely to go get and take that cash. I uh, got a couple more things to talk about and then an announcement before the end of the show. So we got to get to that. Uh, to, 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 to TXN. Uh, let's see, uh, Jim or Tim says uh, from Golden, Colorado. Can you give me a buy point for Texas Instruments and HD? Texas Instruments, uh, man, you you basically had it yesterday. Uh, you filled about half of that gap. Uh, the pop up today's not too bad, but anything around 107, 10, 106.50. Uh, again, like I said, what you want this to do uh, into next week, the light volume bounce today is you want this thing to come back into that 107, 106 area, and you want the volume to just die out and the stock to go sideways. Um, I think there are probably better plays than this, um, but uh, eh, not a bad trade, maybe up to 115, something like that. Looks like where resistance would be on that. Uh, to, to, to what else are we looking at? Uh, to, 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 okay. HD. Um, this one's tougher because it actually broke through the previous high, which is the February 25th high on Home Depot. You didn't have a lot of volume. Uh, you need a close back above 193.42 uh, to give you a buy signal. You're at 192.32. Uh, to me, this one looks like the better play because if it bounces and closes above 193.42, you're probably still in it to win it. And it was just a false break uh, and pullback in to what should be fairly decent support. What I dislike about this stock, it never had a sign of strength when it went over 193.42. Um, so I don't know if you get that much out of it. Again, a lot of diminishing returns on these. I want to find stocks that are kind of all washed out. I suspect that if I'm looking in the right sector, it is more than likely going to be in biotech, uh, maybe the big winner for this summer, uh, depending on where you're at in it. And uh, I've been looking at some stocks. In fact, I attended a uh, symposium on uh, stocks in a certain part of the biotech sector. And uh, no, but that's what I'm going to be writing about in the Tech Insider on Friday. Uh, anyway, uh, not a lot of volume out here today. Um, I would love to see biotech come back down to uh, IVB come down to maybe a hundred bucks. And if it just comes on light volume all next week down to there. Now, if we, if you are a bear, what you want to start seeing is the market moving up on very light volume and making that B to C move on light volume during this week, uh, and then have it all fall apart in June. Uh, but that's it. Um, what else do we have? Got a couple more emails. Take a look at that. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I had a question, a, probably a good thing to address at this time. Uh, the question is about uh, Jim Chano shorting Dunkin' Donuts. He's made a fairly good case on it. Um, the problem I always see with these accounting things uh, was, and same thing was uh, with uh, Tesla, is he was a short a year before it started to fall apart. He was short Tes uh, He was short Enron a year before it started to fall apart. Um, a lot of these accounting fraud kind of stocks, uh, or ones that are where the books are just generally roasted, take a long time to get ready. So when I see this stuff. I put it on my radar, I think about it a long time, and I wait for the next big signal technically to see whether or not I still think that thesis is there. Uh, like I said, I didn't see much in Dunkin' Donuts now, uh, but 
now that I know that Chainos is on it, I'll think a lot more about it. But I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we are back. Um, just a short announcement. We're going to have a target... Uh, he said, we're going to have a Tiger Dollar promotion going on. I guess uh, I didn't have a chance to check, but I, I think it just went live on the front page of TFNN. If not, maybe in a very short amount of time. Uh, we're also going to have a promotion for the Art of Timing the Trade charts. Uh, and uh, we'll talk more about that tomorrow. Once I see it up there in lights, and I know it's true on the TFNN website, uh, but uh, I spent, uh, I don't know, about three months upgrading uh, a lot of the, the, uh, fe uh, the features to current versions of Windows 10 uh, and uh, got that done about a week ago and eh, played with it a little bit, found one last bug, cured that this morning. So we're going to go uh, with the promotion on this. And like I said, we'll talk more about the details. Uh, I had a lot of questions about the Joe DiNapoli um uh, pattern uh, for uh, the double repo. Uh, and do we have enough time to finish that up now? Where am I at? Where's that? I got about a minute. Um, one of the reasons I thought that we were probably fairly close to finding a bottom uh, two is exactly where these patterns finish and what they imply. Um, 
And when uh, you get these patterns in uh, like the NASDAQ, uh, the first day that we went into this was the 29th of May, uh, where it started the that Joe DiNapoli double repo pattern uh, and that it failed. But that's generally where they go right back to. And so we pretty much hit that yesterday. We washed it out. Now we're back up on it. But that's the completion of that pattern. So uh, eh, we have the uh, displaced moving averages in the art of timing the trade charts. Talk more about that this week and through next week. But uh, Tiger Dollar promotion uh, and a promotion for the art of timing the trade charts too. Coming at you. So get ready for it. Check out those Tiger Dollars. Easiest way to make some dough going into the summer season. We'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. So when you can, not when you have to.